This is a, a traditional Thanksgiving scripture that is, if you came to church on Thanksgiving Day, uh, this year many churches would be reading it. It's, it's about Thanksgiving. We're reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Listen for what the Spirit has to say to us. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, hmm, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return except and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, get up. And go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Bible stories take place in a land and a culture that is so different from our own. Think about the features of this particular story. Back in that day, most people walked everywhere, most all the time. Think about what their feet must have looked like in the sandals, in the dust, on the roads. Disciples of teachers, not just Jesus, there were other teachers with other disciples, they learned by walking with them and by going where they went and by doing what they did and then being sent out for little tasks to do them on their own. And then in that time, there are lepers and Samaritans. Leprosy was the most dreaded of all diseases. You were thought of as being un untouchable. You should stay at least six feet away from a leper, if not more. Things will start falling off of you if you're a leper once the the disease starts taking over fingers or toes or your nose. Lepers were outcasts. These lepers in this story were outcasts. They lived together in colonies because they could be with each other. They couldn't live with their families anymore. A daddy or a mommy or a young girl or boy couldn't live with their families anymore. And then there were Samaritans. You remember Samaritans, although they believed in the same God, worshipped God in a different way and had a few theological differences from Jews. And so Jews didn't like Samaritans and treated them also as unclean and vice versa. So here we have a Samaritan leper. So wrap your minds around that. Wrap your minds around how that person might have been perceived by others. That story, the story gets life from thinking about that. In the Bible world, there's also much brokenness and suffering. There's occupation by the Roman Empire, and there's people don't live that long um, like we do now. There's much poverty. They're family troubles. People get lost. People separate. And then wherever Jesus is, coming into these situations with lepers or brokenness or Samaritans or family problems, everything changes. Everything changes when Jesus comes. Like in this story, Jesus is going to Jerusalem. And by the way, he's going to Jerusalem to get crucified. And he knows it. He's on his way. He's not quite there yet. There's still some days to come. But he's going to Jerusalem, and he's passing through 
a territory between Galilee, where he's from, and Samaria on the way to Jerusalem. He enters a small village, and the first thing he sees are ten lepers, lepers who hang together, keeping their distance and crying out to him, have mercy on us. I wonder what they wanted. Healing is so rare that it's unheard of. I wonder if they wanted money. Or I wonder if they wanted his compassion. Or I wonder if they believed they might be healed. And Jesus sees them and he says, go and show yourselves to the priests. Notice that's the next thing he says. Go and show yourself to the priests. The reason for that is that the priests were the ones that decided if someone had been healed of something. They were like the, uh, the medical examiner <laughs> for living people. They would decide, are they better? Are they truly healed? Whatever it was. And they obey, and they're on their way to see the priests, and they look at themselves, and they're healed. If there was a finger missing, it's come back. They see they're healed. Where Jesus is, whether we're broken or whether we are sick or whether our families are broken or whatever our circumstances are, things change. Things change when Jesus comes. And so, so much is the same for us as for Bible times. How can the Bible speak to us from 2,000 years ago? Because it isn't really that different. Our feet might not get dirty walking, and we might drive cars, but things are so much the same. When Jesus is here, things change. And just like our Bible story, gratitude is rare. Now, I do think God is a mind reader, unlike in the children's message when I said people are not mind readers. But notice how Jesus reacts to the gratitude. Gratitude is rare, especially expressed to the giver. One of the lepers, one out of ten, turns around and comes back after he notices he's healed. He turns back. He's praising God as he's running. He falls at Jesus' feet, and he thanks him. He says, you can imagine, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Master. And this is one of those rare times in the Bible, and there's just a few where Jesus seems a little surprised, a little taken aback. This man is at his feet. Thank you. And he says, not to the man, but just out loud, wow, ten people healed, one comes back. What's with that? And it's a Samaritan? All were made well. They were all doing exactly what Jesus said. They were all completely obedient. And Jesus says, one came back. He says, get up and go. Your faith has made you well. Is the one man a little more well than the others? Just like in our Bible story now in the place and time where we are, real gratitude is rare. Those thank you cards I showed the kids, those are actually kind of rare. Back in my mother's generation, she always wrote thank you cards. Who has a mother or a grandmother that writes thank you cards or wrote thank you cards? Raise your hand. (laughs) When my mother passed, she uh, had been sick for several months and couldn't write anything. But after she passed, we went into her drawers and closet and found stacks of unwritten cards that she was going to write people because that's how it was for her. Now, I was that girl. I was the one that my mom said, have you written that card? Have you thanked your grandma? 
And I wasn't very good at it, and I'm still, unfortunately, not very good at it. Our daughters-in-law, you can see, has, have written us a thank you card for every grandchild's gift we have ever given. They come in the mail. Genuine gratitude is rare, and when the tenth leper came to Jesus and went down in front of him on the ground, all the way down, and said, thank you, Jesus was amazed. Jesus was surprised. Jesus said, huh, gratitude is rare. And why was that? Why was he surprised? I'm thinking that Jesus had sort of a thankless ministry. He didn't do it for the thanks. He did it for the love. He didn't do it out of expecting thanks. He did it because he was God himself. Or maybe Jesus knew what science knows now. There have been so many studies saying that expressing, expressing gratitude out loud or in some ways makes you healthier, lower blood pressure, better sleep, better relationships. It's even an antidepressant. There was a study at the University of California at Davis. They had three groups. One group was given reports to write down blessings every week for 10 weeks. The second group was given reports to write down what hassled them or what annoyed them. The third group was given reports to just write down neutral events that didn't affect them one way or the other. They also gave them uh, something to check off how they felt, whether they were exercising, how they were eating. At the end of the 10 weeks, the people who kept the gratitude reports were 25% healthier by all the measures. They exercised more, they ate better, their relationships were better, and they slept better. So I'm going to start doing that tonight because I want all those things too. So maybe Jesus knew the science because God is a mind reader. Maybe why Jesus was looking at and why he was so amazed was because he saw the man's gratitude as a sign of faith. Maybe he realized that the man, not like the others, was truly realizing how God was working in his life. Maybe that's why Jesus says, go, your faith has made you well, because he was a little bit more well, maybe a lot more well, because he was well through and through. He knew the source of his blessings. Sometimes I think so much is different in the Bible world and it's hard even to bring a message from 2,000 years ago. And other times I feel like this is talking to us right now. In the week of Thanksgiving, this is talking to us right now. Real gratitude is rare. And expressed gratitude with body language, with hugs, with coming back and saying thank you, with writing handwritten cards with sending a little gift, with calling someone on the phone, with sending a text. Thank you for last night. Thank you for coming by. Thank you, God. Real gratitude this season makes us whole. I think that's what Jesus is getting at here. It makes us whole.